also have another Mr. Rajesh Kumar with the same name from fourth partner. So I request Mr. Rajesh to have his presentation. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know it is very difficult to uh, listen so many uh, in new thoughts and uh, ideas uh, in post lunch session. So I, I'll be very uh, speaking very simple things and uh, uh, which can be in fact uh, implemented into the system or endem system and uh, first of all i must thank eq team for uh, bringing this topic for discussion uh, asset management is very important thing and we must think uh, in terms of growth of solar uh, industry altogether so i'll i'll, I'll uh, take few seconds to brief our company i am rajesh kumar sinha from fourth partner energy uh, we are seven years old organization, uh, having team of 150 plus uh, dedicated professional, uh, working across 10 offices, operating in 22 states, having portfolio base of 48 plus megawatt of capacity and 60 plus order book. Having implemented solar installations, we do only rooftop. So we have done 1450 plus installation in 22 states. And that's why we are second largest TPC player uh, in India as per uh, BTI latest report. Uh, you can see the white dots, uh, those are our uh, installations. And uh, yes, we are working very hard to fill all the blue map with white dots and soon we will achieve uh, the balance portion. Uh, you know, a good asset management system uh, provides, uh, in fact, uh, better proposition for uh, the developer to offer better, uh, to meet the expectation of investors, to fulfill the commitment, the numbers, achieve the numbers what we have projected to the investors. Some of the factors which directly affect uh, the asset management systems are uh, data management and uh, what Mr. Bajes has already discussed, the quantum of data we get. Uh, we need to check the quality of data, what we get, the cost of data, what we uh, receive in our portal and uh, the cost and time involvement transforming the data into information and then in fact, the alignment of all those data and asset, manage uh, asset management system into OM, that is very important aspect. So data, uh, data management is uh, a key aspect. Environmental aspect also we all know and slightly it has been covered. I will not uh, in fact discuss um, in that. Technical uh, the system design is very important aspect. Even OM, no doubt asset management system is important aspect. but we need to see the designing aspect also installation at site the workmanship very critical and we have to do uh, thorough analysis of all the installations uh, module handling and site likely uh, rightly pointed out uh, by one of my uh, in fact team members like micro cracks may develop during handling of modules uh, termination that is very important uh, else hot uh, else uh, heating of uh, various connectors and fire hazard may take place safety at site manufacturing defects uh, human aspect is improper handling of modules terminations lack of proper training and safety awareness uh, pre asset management check in fact i will run through all the headlines and we can discuss during our discussion uh, period uh, Pre-commissioning and quality checks and side uh, safety checks, what we had to do. Power quality analysis post-installation, like uh, what is, what, how is the quality of uh, power available at site? Uh, what are the grid, grid fluctuations, frequency fluctuation or voltage fluctuation? Or there are some problem at client side also like underrated MCB or cable and number of things are there. Uh, checking termination and training to client person on OM and safety aspect is also very important though we are maintaining those sites. Uh, these are the points which we have to consider, we must consider during asset management, online monitoring, we have discussed data management and reporting, very important aspect, 
alignment of uh, the information what we get during data uh, asset management uh, along with the OM that is also important scheduling of of O&M uh, if uh, battery is going to play a major role in near future so battery management system and maintenance is also very uh, important uh, system maintaining tat means turn and time is also very important training to training manpower analyzing analyzing the troubleshoots of this uh, power plants spare part management and response time warranty claim management as covered by mr brijes and uh, feedback from client that is very important aspect to improve ourselves and uh, quality of asset management system these are the two case studies we can discuss uh, afterwards also uh, there were some issues in the client side uh, low rating of cable and mccb so you can see the fluctuation before and after once we change that the the, the in fact tripping of inverters was completely eliminated uh, another issue of power factor that we can discuss uh, how we can improve the power factor uh, by adopting various methods uh, there are two case studies how you can see how the power factor of 0.95 drop to 0 0.08 when solar power plant is on major performance affecting factor pv module cleaning uh, no doubt frequency of cleaning is very important uh, but the quality of cleaning is also very important that we need to uh, see and uh, design aspect uh, in, uh, in fact uh, shadow analysis of interval spacing cable sizing various other uh, terminations that we need to check uh, grid infrastructure we have to consider before uh, installation of plant or before designing stage so kind of uh, cables kind of equipments we can select and these are the few remote monitoring that we can discuss uh, in fact during our discussion how we monitor and how we uh, drill down to a particular problem and sort out the problem uh, monthly tracking and review online reports how we generate inverter wise performance analysis how we see the see the red mark how the improvement took place that we can discuss uh, VDC to PR curve, VDC to IDC curve, in, inverter efficiency curve. We have to drill down to very specific level of the problem and find out the solution. Uh, inverter performance analysis that, that we can cover, DG protection system. It is now, in fact, in all the plants where we go for uh, commercial and industrial uh, segment, uh, it is a mandatory kind of thing. In fact, we all have to provide a DG protection and monitoring system. So you can see how uh, the energy was being exported earlier, how we have controlled that. So and and how it, this is a new concept, solar cloud TV, where where you can install a TV system in the cloud uh, in the client premises, and they can monitor all the key data is there. Manpower and skill development, very important thing. Uh, solar industry is growing, and uh, we need to see that skilled manpower availability also need to catch the space and uh, continual training not only for random personnel but project team is also very important to get the quality of uh, project delivered quality of asset which is to be maintained maintaining all those records already covered by mr bridges maintaining fault, fault history and use of technology like thermal imaging we can drone for using OM. that's all thank you so much rest all we can discuss Thank you, sir, for your uh, presentation and time. Uh, I request Mr. Andrew uh, Nobel from Cleantech Solar to give his presentation. To speak, this is the third event I have. I, I'm speaking in Delhi, so some of you, some of you have have watched one or two speeches before. The difference I'll try to make today is the other two times I was extremely negative. So today I'll be positive because a lot of developments in our team have taken place and we have been able to recover assets. So today I bring good news. Before I start my presentation, I picked up four examples of things that the colleagues on the panel spoke about and that we face as well. So I wanted to share with them. One is the access to the roof of the client. Some people think it's a trivial thing. We have a client that requires us to 
go for a five-day training course at the client's premises before you can even step on the rooftop. So you can imagine you have to bring all the O&M contractors and your own guys. And if you lose that contractor, you have to retrain people because there is a list of the personnel that can gain access to the roof. So that point we know quite well. Second point was about having one engineer managing multiple sites. Uh, I believe M plus was talking about that. That's the same model we implement because we have more than 50 sites in India. We cannot have 50 guys. So we have a few guys and each guy manages a certain number of systems until you can tell that the, the engineer is overloaded. If you see the guys working Saturdays and Sundays, because people forget that the sun shines every day. Yeah? So O&M teams, and I'm sure you can correlate it's very common that it's a Saturday, I'm with my family and my phone rings because whatever issue has happened to a certain system. And the bigger the system, the more the panic, right? Because of the losses. The third uh, item I picked up is on like basically revenue uh, disappearance from deem generation. Some of our clients, they're very big multinational companies. So you can imagine they look at us as the midgets. You're a dwarf, you're nobody. I'm running billion dollar business here. So whatever I tell you, it's the law. I don't care if it's in your contract. So some contracts we have deemed generation clauses and you still have to fight with all these big players, you know, to say, hey, there's a clause in the contract and you owe me money. Sometimes we're lucky, but not always, yeah? And the fourth point is on roof damage. This is the best. Cyclone hits, force majeure, the roof is massively damaged. Let's say 10 things broke on the roof. Five belong to the solar system. The client comes and says, solar company, go fix all items. We're like, hey, this is not ours. So they try their luck, right? They try their luck and they, they, they check, they, they hope that you fix things for them. So these four items, I, I thought there's a lot of correlation with our with our day-to-day -day business as well. So some uh, good news now, because again, cannot give three negative speeches, so I try to be uh, positive today. Uh, so quickly about Cleantech Solar and then some recent numbers and then I have these topics like India then. So this is one year ago to two years ago when I joined Cleantech, what we have done and where we are now. Quickly on this slide is that I, I, I'm one of the 30 engineers, right? So people see developers, they think it's like 59 bankers and businessman and one engineer. In fact, 50% of all our staff are engineers. So even though we have EPCs and contractors, we have to beat them up quite massively because we need to make sure the quality is there and that they're doing things according to what we want. So uh, yeah, we have the, the big difference here uh, is that we are present in many other countries in Southeast Asia, which increases the challenges. So my engineers, and three of them are here in the room, not only they take care of their assets in India, they are in the same groups as my engineers in other countries. And they know it's a, it's, we're in the same boat. If the boat sinks, everyone will go down together. So we might have issues in a site in Cambodia and someone from here might go because the guy from here is the best knowledge center at that particular matter and vice versa. We have engineers that come from the other markets to India. So very important part, you know, this is an engineering piece of equipment. You need engineers uh, in your enterprise to, to hedge the risk. Uh, some uh, fresh numbers for you. Uh, so we're present in six countries and by the end of this year, it'll be eight. Uh, we're signing a few deals in Vietnam and Indonesia. Portfolio, but India is our bread and butter, 70%. This number has not moved much in the past two years. Uh, 70 megawatts of signed deals, nearly 50 megawatts running. And a major USP for us is there is this push 
from big MNCs like headquarters in America or headquarters in, in Europe, just, just tell all their factories in Asia you must solarize because first of all, solar is cheaper. Second of all, we want to be green because everyone is green. So solarize all roofs. And then we have clients that have roofs in, let's say Vietnam, Singapore and India. So we can, we have this ability then to deploy for the same client in multiple geographies. And, and in some cases, the procurement team is, is, uh, is following the rules of the headquarters. So that helps us in, secure, in securing uh, multi-site deals. For India, this is our footprint, uh, north, west, and, um, and uh, south, with hubs here in Delhi, Chennai, uh, Pune area. We have a design team in Hyderabad. And uh, again, 50 sites, very complex, very complex to manage that. I tell people, look, it's much easier to manage two 25 megawatt PV plants than to manage 20, 30, 40 rooftops. So the amount of work is, uh, is uh, considerable. And we are also deploying a few ground mounts, but in small scale, uh, also with open access coming up. Some of our logos here, uh, some, I, I realized that some of the clients match with the previous speaker. So yeah, so uh, you know, just look outside your window of your airplane every time you're reaching a city. The number of rooftops is massive. So I, I usually, I don't see people as competitors because the number of roofs outweigh the number of available companies. My company can maybe do 100 projects at once and the other companies, maybe they can do, I don't know, 100 or 200, doesn't matter. The number of roofs is massive out there. That's why you end up seeing even some of the same logos there because some of these clients, they have 20 roofs in India, 30 roofs, right? They might not have the ability to, to deploy with the same uh, developer. So uh, these are a few of our uh, big monsters on roofs. Uh, and then you can see, you can really put some volume uh, on these big factories. And again, some of these factories are like this Mazak is a Japanese factory. So you have to follow the safety standards, all the paperwork, which is driven directly from Japan. So this is a very complex exercise. You might say, ah, in Cambodia, I cut corners, but then, you know, the, you cannot cut corners because some of these clients, they have 10 times more engineers than you have. So you go to a meeting, you and another of your engineers, you enter the room, you're, you two are alone there and suddenly 10 engineers come and they bring civil engineer, electrical engineer, all sorts of types of engineers. So this is very complex uh, business model when you're deploying in big MNCs rooftops. Uh, okay, so when I started at CleanTech two plus years ago, uh, so this is what we found. It was panic across the board uh, because the, the performance of the assets dropped. So we started detecting issues in the winter. So it was a combination of soiling and air pollution. And investor is panicking because the, re the returns are not there. So it was a very difficult time because you cannot solve things from night to day, right? Uh, it's a continuous effort. So, and we had issues in most of our India sites, whether it was soiling or whether it's power factor. Client says, my power factor moved 0 0.01, go fix. So it's, a, it's a, sometimes I see my life vanishing before my eyes, but I like what I do, have been in solar for 12 plus years. Uh, so this is first time I came in Delhi, to Delhi two years ago, could not see the sky. And then I'm like, this is really bad. So I had written a paper about haze in Singapore. So we applied the same knowledge to Delhi and found that the losses were around 5% on an annual basis. Uh, then the next point was to make the business development guys, like my colleague here, Anuvarat, is in the room, is because it's like, look, if I'm X kilometers from downtown Delhi, am I out of the blast zone? 
And I told him it takes time. And of course, he wanted the answer on the spot. So I said, no, give me, give me one year because you have to see the entire seasons play and then you can uh, make a decision. So we have some assets that are 70 to 80 kilometers from downtown. And we have many assets, so that gave us a lot of data to analyze. So we, we wrote the paper about soiling, uh, soiling and haze, and that gave a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, traction, because I shared this with the community. So if you don't have the paper, just come to me. I'll share the PDF with you. Then last year, I wrote another paper about gauging the performance of assets in India because the sensors get dirty very fast, so it's useless to use performance ratios. So this paper talks about different ways of gauging the performance. Again, PDF is ready to roll. Just come to me and I'll give you, the, uh, uh, give you a copy. So what type of homework we did? We intensified the cleaning cycles for Delhi during winter. We went from like once a month, no, two times a month, three times a month. Some sites is even four times a month. Uh, cleaning cycles were optimized across the country. Some months you might need zero because it's very rainy. And then other months you might need two or three cleaning. So we uh, adjusted those. Training of uh, contractors and diversification because, you know, cannot have contractor comes and says, I can handle. And then I'm like, no, you can't, because it's too many projects for you. So we needed to diversify to, to diminish the, the risk on our side. Our team started with one engineer, Rohit, here in Delhi. And then, you know, he did a lot of this work of rectifying old assets in our portfolio. We call these assets legacy assets. So now these assets are back at a, a, a health level, which is uh, uh, in line with what the investor wants. And I will request you to Sure. Uh, I think I have one more slide. Uh, optimization of business model, right? Uh, so we know how much we're going to bring. And what's the situation now? Last time I spoke in Delhi, I said, I dare anyone in the audience to find me a system here in Delhi above 1400 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak per annum. We have one in our portfolio, and it's 70 to 80 kilometers from downtown. So now I tell the business guys, you can use 1400 in a business plan if you are 80 kilometers. Now the question is, what if you're at 50, 40, 30? Because I tell you, the pollution is not linear in this city. Very complex exercise. But this is good news. Uh, other assets in India improved, and this boosts the investor confidence. A lot of investors were asking me, so why should I put money in India? And we're like, no, 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 relax. It can be done. Just give us some time. And we have demonstrated that. And the legacy sites, yeah, con it's not dead, right? You can improve and bring almost back to full health. So thank you for your attention. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, for your presentation.